Hi, this is Dr. Gregory Sadler. I'm a professor of philosophy and the president and founder of an educational consulting company called Reason.io, where we put philosophy into practice. I've studied and taught philosophy for over 20 years, and I find that many people run into difficulties reading classic philosophical texts. Sometimes it's the way things are said or how the text is structured, but the concepts themselves are not always that complicated, and that's where I come in. To help students and lifelong learners, I've been producing longer lecture videos and posting them to YouTube. Many viewers say they find them useful. What you're currently watching is part of a new series of shorter videos, each of them focused on one core concept from an important philosophical text. I hope you find it useful as well. In his dialogue, the Credo, named after the main interlocutor of the dialogue with Socrates, Plato has that character provide some arguments for a position that, that he's advancing in relation to Socrates' trial, Socrates' impending execution, and the possibility of escape. Credo is a rich man from out of town, and he's a student of Socrates and also a friend. And so he comes in and he says, look, I've bribed the jailer. We have the, the escape plan in place. You just have to come with us. And Socrates says to him, well, you know, let's, let's think about this. So Credo is trying to convince Socrates that it's the right thing to do. And I've put it here on the board the main arguments that Credo is advancing. You notice that he doesn't just have one single point that he just harps on over and over again. Although there is going to be a common thread running through all of these, and we're going to look at um, Socrates' response to that in some of the other core concept videos about this. So Credo wants to get... Socrates to leave Athens. This is his main point. Socrates should flee Athens. He's been sentenced to death. The trial was, you know, rather unfair, and Socrates said, look, I'm not going to get a, a good trial from you, so I'm going to use this as a, a talking point piece. Um, you had your chance, Athens. That's all discussed in the Apology. So Credo says, look, Socrates, you should leave now. Now remember, Socrates is an old man. He's lived in Athens all of his life, except for being on military campaigns. Um, Credo is a rich man from a, another Greek city-state, Thessaly in this case. And Credo is going to make some, some arguments. So the first argument that he makes is an interesting one. He says, look, your death is going to be a great loss to me. You're the kind of friend that I can't easily replace. And what does he mean by that? He means not that, well, you're a rich friend or you're well-connected or anything like that, because Socrates isn't. Instead, what he means is you're somebody who has integrity. You're somebody who is reflective. You're somebody who can teach. You're really one of a kind, Socrates, and I don't want to lose you. So that's an interesting argument. And, you know, you would think that Credo could just stick with that, but instead he moves on immediately to... And besides, what are people going to think? Here I am, a rich guy. We've got other friends that are rich as well. And we would put ourselves out for just about anybody. Are they going to say, they really didn't like Socrates. They must not have cared for, for him because they valued their wealth more than they valued the opportunity to bribe the jailer and get him out of jail. Now notice that that's making the assumption on the part of those people that, given the opportunity, Socrates will go along with it. Socrates isn't going to go along with it, uh, and that's one of the weaknesses to, to Credo's position. And we're going to come back to this people will think uh, thing in a, in a few minutes. Another argument that he gives, he says, look, the plan is ready. So this is an argument for what, from what we might call expediency or, or active possibility. He's saying, I've already bribed the jailer. We've already got the escape plan ready. Don't worry about us. You know, the, the people of Athens are not going to be able to hurt us. They're not going to be able to, to attack our reputation if we get you out of here. We're going to be in, a, in another Greek city-state, and we'll be okay. And none of your friends here are going to suffer because of it. So that's a third argument being given. The fourth, which is the most interesting the one that's going to be the sticking point that's going to get Socrates 
um, reframing the argument, Krita goes on and he says, oh, by the way, it's wrong for you to stay here and allow yourself to be executed. Morally wrong. Not just it's, it's imprudent or not profitable or a bad idea. Not just people are going to say stuff about us. Not just it's going to be you know, a real um, loss to, to me and to other people who love you. But Socrates, you're doing the wrong thing by actually staying here. And Plato, or Plato has Credo give three different reasons for this. One is, this is a very interesting one, look Socrates, if you stay here, you're doing exactly what your enemies intended. They're, they wanted to silence you, they've wanted to silence you for a long time, now they're finally going to get the chance, and you're playing right into their hands. So you're doing something wrong. Why? Because you're collaborating with somebody else who's trying to do something wrong, namely to you. So that's one. Another very interesting argument. Socrates, you have children. If you allow yourself to be executed, who's going to look after your kids? And, you know... Nowadays, we might say, well, you know, your, your family structure or, you know, at worst, the orphanage or uh, child protective services or somebody will step in and take care of them. But, you know, uh, in ancient societies, to be an orphan was really to be at a disadvantage. So by allowing these other people and the legal system to, in effect, cause his death, he is putting his sons, his young not yet developed, you know, not yet uh, fully educated sons, at risk. And that's wrong for him to do. He's being a bad father by not fleeing to, to, to you know, some other place where presumably his sons could, could join him or he could send money to his sons. The last one that he says, and here Credo kind of shifts ground and it comes back to this, this second point. He says... Look, Socrates, you know, you're this guy who's always talking about the need to be good and about bravery, and this is not the act of a brave man just to, you know, accept it and, and allow these people to kill you. You should, you know, you should go and, and try to do everything you can. You should, you know, he's not uh, obviously in the, the 19th or 20th century or 21st century, so he can't say rage, rage against the dying of the light. But in effect, he's saying something very similar. Socrates, you can't take this lying down because that's, the, that's an act of cowardice. Almost immediately, Credo shifts to saying, and, and people are going to think that we're a bunch of cowards too because we didn't help you out. And, you know, look, we are helping you out and you're not cooperating with us. And all of that goes back to this, people will think, and worrying about public perception, public reputation, public image, uh, rather than worrying about what the actuality or the facts of the case really are, Credo is recurring to saying, hey, look, you know, most people are going to just say, these guys were too cowardly, they didn't have the guts to try this daring maneuver and get Socrates out of prison. So... He's, you know, making a pretty strong case for this idea that Socrates should flee Athens. He should break the rules. He should violate the laws of his city, which have under which he's been found guilty, and he's been sentenced to death. 